In this video, we are going to discuss the conservation of energy and the conservation of momentum. We want to use them uh, together to, um, to calculate the initial velocity of the uh, ball coming out of a pendulum. So we already know, we've verified this twice, but now we just want to use a couple more laws. It's just different ways that we can do this. And so the theory is going to look something like this. So this is going to be the first scenario for the initial momentum and the ball will have an initial velocity. The, this, this particular object, which is the tube, it will have zero velocity. So I'll just put up the tube. And then the mini launcher or the ball will no longer be in the mini launcher and it'll be totally embedded into some clay here and we'll have a final velocity here and so this is going to be our final momentum and both of these are vectors so in the first scenario all of the momentum is carried by the ball and its mass and I think I need to make that clear that this ball has a mass and this tube has a mass so in the second scenario, all of the momentum is carried by the tube and the ball. So we know already that the, init the initial momentum is just equal to the final momentum based on the theory that um, we calculated earlier and our, we, we um, developed earlier. And that was if we looked at our impulse momentum theorem. And we considered that all of the net forces acting on the system equals to zero. This would imply that delta P is just equal to zero, which, which we could therefore write PF minus P initial equals to zero. That's the conservation of momentum. So we'll use that in this particular case and we'll go ahead and describe our initial momentum. Initial momentum is just going to be mass of the ball times the velocity of the ball plus the mass of the tube times the velocity of the tube. And all of that is in the initial condition or in the initial state. And then we have the final state where you have the mass of the ball plus the mass of the tube moving at the same final velocity. Now what we know is that since we have the initial momentum equaling to the final momentum, this is just implying that mv naught plus mt vt equals to m plus mt times vf. All right, so if we analyze this, and this should be initial, if we analyze this, we'll know that our initial velocity for the tube is just zero. So this piece will go to zero. And if we know that we are looking for this velocity, then this equation implies that we'll just divide both sides by m. And we'll get v naught by itself. So v naught is going to equal to the mass of the ball plus the mass of the tube over the mass of the ball times the velocity, the final velocity here. Okay, so that's part of our theory. The only thing that we need now is the final velocity. So we need to be able to calculate that final velocity. And the way we are going to do it is through, is by considering when that ball strikes the tube. And so that ball is going to strike the tube. Okay. 
and the tube is going to start to move with this final velocity. The tube is going to rise a certain height. Once it rises a certain height, the velocity, and I'll just say energy final, is going to go to zero. If we consider the initial height, y initial, equaling to zero, that'll be good. Let me just back that up a little bit. Yf equals to zero. That'll be good. And then we can have this one as, oh, not Yf. My goodness. That's Y initial, guys. Sorry about that. So Y initial equals to zero. And then Yf equals to zero. No, it can't equal to zero. We don't know what that equals to. So it has some yf. We need that calculation. So in this particular case, the it, it's rising a certain amount. So if we take our conservation of energy, which comes from the work energy theorem, and the work energy theorem looks like this, where delta E is just going to be our kinetic energy and our uh, potential energy and the work is going to be and it's, it's going to be uh, they're going to be equal to the, the, the final work and the initial work they'll be equal since they're working in a conservative field that conservative field is gravity so that means that since the initial work is going to equal to the final work this implies that delta W equals to zero so we can just write our kinetic energy equation and call this final and we're calling it final to connect to this equation because we don't know what this is and this is what we're looking for even though I have it as final I'm trying to keep it connected to this final over here because it's all a part of the same experiment we just consider it at different times notice remember that if the if the if the pendulum rises remember the condition for uh, momentum, the, the momentum to be conserved. This, this force has to be zero. But look at what happens when the pendulum rises. The force is no longer zero. We have a gravitational force acting down. So we can't use the conservation of energy during this state. Okay? And so um, that's why I'm keeping this this way. So this is one half mv uh, f squared plus m g y initial so again it is still a vector equals to one half m v initial no not initial e final energy final squared plus m g y final so what do we know about y initial well y initial is just zero so that's going to go to zero. And then what do we know about the final velocity for energy? We know that this is just going to go to zero. So we end up with a similar equation as the last time. The masses are going to go away. So lo, lo and behold, we're going to have 2GY, the square root of 2GY for the final velocity. So all I did was multiply both sides by 2 to get that. And then I took the square root here, and that's what gave me this value. So now we take that final velocity and we substitute it back in to our equation. Well, here's the equation up here. We can substitute it into this equation up here. So what I'll do is I'll just say m, that's the mass of the ball, plus the mass of the tube over the mass of the tube times the square root of 2g delta y or y final. Now notice, only thing that we need to know, we need to know the measurements of we need to know the measurements of the mass of the ball, the mass of the tube, and the height. So this is the theory. This is the theory that we'll refer back to. Okay. So in the next video we're going to go ahead and go into the experiment.